Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So today we are making these little mini junk journals and they truly are treasure books because they are filled to the brim with treasures. And I know that that might sound a little bit corny, but I think you guys are going to love this project. So just to show you a little peek inside, I don't want to show you this one. This is the one we're actually making in the tutorial, step by step. And we are using all offcuts. We're using little things that we don't throw away, like little pieces of paper, little scraps for pages and uh, all that sort of stuff, right? They are so easy to make. And the best part is there's no actual binding into the cover. So these are completely removable which I think is really cool. You can probably see that I've sewn this one straight down the middle. It's not a necessary step if you don't have a sewing machine. You do not have to have a sewing machine for this, for this project. They are really easy to make, really fun to make, and a good way to use up all of your little scraps. And at the end of the video, I also speak about how you can actually use this. What would you use this for? Because I'm sure some of you are already having that question form in your mind. All right, let's get started with the tutorial. Some of the things that we need are some type of a little box. I'm using these Sultana boxes. They're really little. You can use like medicine boxes and things like that, as long as it's a little box. And then we need some scrap fabrics. Like this, I'm using this upholstery fabric. This one happens to be really thick, but it doesn't have to be. And then for our signatures, any little scrap of paper that you can get your hands on is going to be perfect for this project. So I just pulled out some of my scraps, some painted papers and all sorts of different types of paper. So that's for the signatures inside. I'm making two signatures. And then you need something to bind them with. I'm using this elastic, gold elastic, because I happen to have quite a bit of this. So I'm going to use that. But you can just use normal twine, or it doesn't have to be elasticized. You'll still be able to remove the signatures from the book, even if it's not elasticized. So if you don't have elastic, that's still fine. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, I did try one of them covering, instead of using the fabrics, I used just scrapbook paper. And then this happened and I abandoned the project. I didn't, I didn't like this. The paper is tearing at those folds and I kind of knew that was going to happen. I don't know why I still went ahead with it. I can definitely cover this maybe with some lace. So I'm not throwing this out because I still think it's going to look nice, but I just need to, you know, cover the spine. So this is why I opted for fabric rather than paper. Okay, I am going to start making that cover. So I need to open up my box. And now what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to keep as much of this extra bits as I possibly can. Uh, it will make sense in a moment. So I'm not going to trim everything off. Because all of these things can serve as more reinforcement for my journal. I just trimmed off the bits that were, what's the word, kind of in a way, I guess. I'm not sure what the word is. Now I'm going to fold all of these bits down and glue them down. And that's going to provide extra reinforcement and strength to my little journal. Most definitely you don't have to do it this way, but that's just what I do. See what I mean? All that extra reinforcement makes it nice and sturdy. And I'm just clipping it down with these bulldog clips just so it kind of stays glued down. Uh, just until it glues down, I guess. At this stage, the most important thing is that you have a little bit of reinforcement for the spine. So if you're going to be getting rid of all of those other bits, at least keep these spine bits. I just want to check that I have enough space here for, for it to be, you know, folded properly. So I'm just getting rid of that little extra bit because remember there's going to be fabric and all sorts of stuff there too and these are just little temporary measurements look how cute in a little journal all right so now what i want to do is i want this fabric to be on the outside because it's so thick it's very very thick this fabric and so i've chosen a nice thinner type of fabric to go on the inside usually what i do i use the same fabric for both inside and outside but because of the thickness of this one that's why i'm choosing a different one so i'm just going to trim 
So I've just trimmed to have extra fabric all around and then later I'm going to cut that off. And now the next step is probably, you can skip the next step, but I'll show you here. What I like to do is cover the edges of my box with washi tape. Can you see this here? So that you can see some sort of a pattern rather than the cereal box coming through. I don't know, I just like to hide the cereal box. And here I used masking tape on this one here. So is it necessary? No, probably not. But I just like to do these little things, as you know, if you watch my channel. So I'm going to cover the, the edges of this one with just masking tape. I ran out of masking tape. My kids always come here and steal my things, which is fine with me. It's okay with me. I don't mind it. They can take my things and be creative all they want. But then this happens in the middle of a video. I run out of masking tape and I just need one little piece here. I have this thick one, so I'll just use this. So here we go. No big deal. I just covered the edges, inking on those edges. Here we go. Nice sealed edges. I like that. All right, my next step is my front cover. So this is the piece I'm using for my front cover. So for these little journals, I'm not bothering with, you know, covering the edges and folding over. No, I'm not bothering with that. All I'm going to do is glue this straight on top of this. And I'm not even trying to get glue all over. All I want is for that to stay in place while I'm sewing around the edges. I glued it down here because I wanted to get as much as this peacock on there anyway so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my sewing machine i'm not even waiting for this glue to dry i just want it as a temporary hold really and i'm going to sew a straight line all around the edges of this journal i'm not at all bothered that my sewing machine or my needle is going to go through thick fabric layers of cardstock and cardboard and then also masking tape i'm not worrying about any of that stuff in fact i'm going to be doing the same thing adding another layer of fabric so you know i'm just using universal needle and i have no issues whatsoever i speak more about that in my frequently asked questions video if you want to have a look so what i'm going to do now like i said i i'm actually going to sew from the wrong side just so I see where I'm going and I'm keeping those stitches very, very close to the edge, as close as I can. Here we go, that's sewn all around and now I'm going to trim the excess fabric and I'm using my zigzag scissors. You can just do a straight line but I wouldn't cut all the way to the cereal box. Here we go and now I'm going to repeat exactly the same process with this fabric that I'm going to put on the inside. So apply some glue. So that's going to be my inside. And now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this on from this side. And I'm just going to follow these stitches that are already done here. They're, they're not looking the best, are they? But it's not bothering me because I'm not seeking perfection. And in this type of thing, because it's so busy and all over the place, if you know what I mean, like things sticking out and all of that. The stitching, it doesn't have to be perfect. Here we go back at the sewing machine and like I said, I'm just going to sew a straight line all around and I'm going to follow the previous stitch as a guide. I'm just going to sew right next to it. All right, here we go. I was playing around with some zigzag stitching and that sort of stuff. Uh, and now I'm just going to, once again, I'm going to follow what I've already been cutting over here. What I'm trying to say, I'll try and align the zigzags, if that makes sense. You know, like that. And just trimming all the excess fabric off. It's gone very gloomy in here. I hope you can still see. All right, that's the inside. That's the cover done. So very cute. And you can do this exact same process with any size cereal box. My next step is getting my signatures ready. I'm going to do two signatures, 10 pages per signature. So that's 20 pages in total. And what I mean by that 10 pages, I mean 10 folded pages like this. I want some of my pages to stick out this way. So to be longer than my cover, but I don't want any of my pages to stick out this way. 
because of my elastic closure. See what I mean? Because of this, because I'm, that's how I'm keeping my journal closed, I don't want any pages to be in my way. Yes? Makes sense? And also, of course, because of the binding that we're using, see here, this binding has to wrap around our signatures and our pages. They can't be sticking out too far or any. They can't be sticking out full stop because then they're going to rip. Yes? Makes sense? So what I'll do is, you know, I'll approximately check the height. And then I can do some ripping, I can do some cutting, as long as I have a nice selection of different types of papers. I think it's going to look good. We can even have a little fabric, like a fabric little page in there. Perhaps I can stiffen this up with some glue or some uh, matte medium or something like that, I don't know. Or like gesso, I don't know, I might not do it in this video, but... I'm using all of my little scraps that, you know, we all have a box of these that we save somewhere. We can do little, like, pocket pages like this. Why not? Look at this, how cute little pocket page. I can put some little tags in there. I think things like these, little painty papers, they look so good in these types of journals, the little ones. I'm going to use some of this packaging paper as well some lined paper. I'm trying to get a, a, a variety of all sorts of types of things. You know, I've got scrapbook paper, I've got vellum paper, paint, painty papers, and we're going to do some envelope. Now, it's just nice to have a, a different, you know, selection of different patterns and colors and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so all of my papers are ready. I do have more than 20, so I'm going to eliminate some of them. And I'm going to start building my signatures. I want this to be my very first page, followed by, I don't know, anything will do. What's going to look good when it's sticking out of the journal? That's going to look good. Here we go. So I have 10 pages, and that's going to be my first signature. And I've got 10 pages in my second signature. And it's going to look like that in my journal. For now, we're going to go in and do all sorts of stuff to these papers here and to the edges and all of that. But before I do anything, I just want to check it's all fitting here. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do, this is not something that I do usually in my journal making. But I'm actually going to go to my sewing machine. And I'm going to sew these signatures right there in the middle. So what we will have then is when you've got something like this and you want to remove that signature completely from the book, you know, everything stays intact. The pages stay intact. Or I should say together. The pages stay together. You definitely don't need to do this step because you may not want your pages to stay together. You might be able to want to pull out a page out of your journal, work on it and then slide it back in. You can't do that if your pages are sewn together. So it's up to you. And here we go. So sewn straight down the middle. Trim that off. Here we go. Perfect. My two signatures are ready to go into my book. But before I do any of that stuff, before I do the binding, I want to completely finish these signatures. So now I'm going to spend some time working on the edges of the pages. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this box where I have little offcuts of fabrics and lace and all that sort of stuff. Maybe little things like this, you know, whatever I can really get my hands on, something little, maybe some tabs like this. Some, you can glue things on, you can sew things on. I'm going to start adding things on the pages, not all of the pages, but just as an example, you can see here I've got some lace. I've got some of this organza, whatever it is. Then I have a tab here. Then I have some lace over here. Just adding different things, you know, to make it look rich. Things like this. I love this one here. Maybe some ruffles, a little flower here. So first thing I'm going to do is work on the edges, like I said. And then once I finish that, look at this. I've just woven this ribbon through the page. And then after I do the edges, 
I'm going to go through again and I'm going to add little things like postage stamps, stickers, little tags. Uh, what have I got in here? Let's see. Things that are clipped in here. I've got a postage stamp, Singapore, clipped in. Here's a little ephemera thing that's clipped in. Little sticker here, clipped in tag. Look at this. Just little treasures throughout the book. Look at this. Here's a little removable journaling spot and a paper clip. So what I was thinking to do is, I don't want to bore you to death, you're watching me do it on camera. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do all of these things off camera. I'm going to come back and show you what I've done just quickly, but I'm showing you here the sort of thing that's going to happen, right? So. I'll go and work on my edges over here and then we'll do the binding. All right, here we go. Both the signatures have been embellished. I've done all sorts of different things on these edges and just quickly, you know, I'll kind of show you. I think I might, after the journal is complete, I might do a final flip through, but this is just a quick little thing. Here's a little envelope there. Anyway, so that's all done, but let's just keep going with this. And that's what it's going to look like. Before I do anything, I want to get the closure happening on these journals, just so it's easier for me. So like I said at the beginning, I'm using this stretchy elastic and I'm simply going to wrap it around once like this and tie a knot at the back. And I'm doing a nubble, uh, a nubble? I'm doing a double knot, uh, left over right, right over left, or a square knot. There we go, and that's going to be at the back, so I'm just going to trim this off. Nothing overly special for the closure. Alright, so that's going to help me when I'm doing the binding, which is what I'm going to do next. So once again, I'm using this elastic, and like I said before, you don't need to have an elastic. You can just use any type of a thread. You know, you want something thicker, you don't want any thin sort of a thread. And now I'm going to... Did I say what I did? Basically, I just put it through the middle of my signature. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but put it through the middle of my signature and then around the spine. Here's my little spine and I want them to meet up here. I need more fingers, so I'm trimming off what I don't need. So this is what's happening over here. So that's just wrapped around. Okay, and now all I have to do is tie a knot up here at the top. But this keeps opening and stuff, so that's why this is going to come in handy now, so it can just keep everything in place. And now I'm going to tie a knot, a double knot again. And there we go, that's a very simple binding, and this is really highly annoying that this, this elastic kind of just goes everywhere when I tie that knot, so you wouldn't have this problem with twine, that's for sure. But anyway, I make it work, and here we go. That's the first signature, now I'm going to do the exact same thing with my second signature. And I know that somebody is probably going to ask me about this elastic. It's very beautiful, isn't it? Gold. And where I got it from. And to be honest with you, it was a lucky find. Here we go, wrapped around the cover. And now I just need to tie a knot up the top. Here we go. And to finish that sentence off, I found this elasticized gold elastic at a op shop or thrift store. So it was a very lucky find. So now what I'm going to do, because these are going all sorts of different ways and because it's going to look great, I'm going to add some beads on these. So what I'm going to do is keep it really, really simple and I'm just going to use one bead on each of these and I could potentially tie a knot here to have that bead stay in place. But what I'm using instead of tying a knot are these, they're called crimpers. They're tiny, tiny little silver beads like this that you put onto the thread and then you use plies like this to squish them shut. So I'll show you on this how it's done, how it's already done. You see this? So I put my bead through which moves around and then I had one of those crimpers that's now been squished shut. So that bead cannot go anywhere and I don't have a bulky knot at the end and it looks quite cool. So I'll show you how it works. So you see I've got my bead here and then I've got one of those crimper things. And then I just sort of have it to where I want it, let's say about there. And see how it's round and sitting on that elastic. And then I'm going to take my pliers and just 
squish it down completely just like that look at that all you beaters out there would know all of this fun stuff and there we go that's not going anywhere and then now i can trim off the excess just like that and i'm gonna do the same for the other three okay here we go a little beads added and that also adds weight to the end of the strings so they're not going all different ways and the last thing that i want to do now is something on the cover so i'll show you what i did on the previous journals i've just added uh, this is actually sewn on and i have a brad on there and uh, I have a little tag that can be removed and by the way if you see something here and you think and you want to know where I bought stuff please don't ask me where I buy stuff because I buy most of my stuff you know either on Facebook marketplace or op shops thrift stores that kind of thing so that's why I don't share links I don't have any Amazon links to share with you okay so back to this here this is all sewn on just added some pieces and then this one has I added an eyelet there and then this stuff, this sequin, oh, what's it called? I don't know. That. And then over here, this one also, is it? No, that doesn't actually come out. So that's all been sewn down together straight into that cover. But for this journal, mini journal, because I kind of already have one, I'm just going to do this. And this is what I mean. So this was an earring and I just kind of take these little bits off and use them on paper clips and stuff. And here comes the reason why I said don't ask me where I buy my stuff. Every time I show these spiral paper clips, people ask me where did I get the spiral paper clips. This was from Aldi and as you know, Aldi has doesn't always have the same thing. So it was just one of those times when they were selling the spiral paper clips, I bought some. So if I want to go and get some now, I wouldn't know where to go. I'd probably check eBay. Okay, spiral paper clip. And I just added some little dangly on there. And I'm just going to put that onto the cover. And there's my decoration for the cover. Really easy and straightforward. Here we go. Okay, very straightforward, right? So I'm just thinking that I may have overdone it with this one a little bit compared to this one. This one's quite a bit thicker, but who doesn't love thick, chunky monkeys like this, right? You know that I like making writing journals where there's lots of space to write, but I like stuff like this as well. Anyway, let's have a look inside. It is so much fun, so much fun to make and so much fun to flip through. So starting off with that vellum page over here, I just have a little heart with some gold mesh and... I was using just bits and pieces that I have laying around. I put some stickers and little ephemera pieces, you know, little mini journaling spots. Here's a little paper clip with that dangly. I'm going to stop saying little. I always say little, little, little in for every single little thing. See, I did it. I just did it again. I can't help myself. Here's a tag. Oh, I didn't say little, even though it is little. It's tiny. Maybe I'll start saying tiny, tiny, tiny. I really love this middle of the little signature. Some, I'll, I'll stop, I promise, I'll stop now. Some flowers here that I've glued on and it's just so cute. It's, it's very interesting to flip through something like this. Those are just stickers there that you're seeing with some inking on the edges, some lace on the edge there, you know, just some little sticker over here. See, I did it again. A tag. Over here as well, a tag spot. I'll just say a little in my head from now on. Over here we have flower. And a tag. And then over here is envelope. Mini envelope. With, I just put a heart in there. And then we just keep on going. It's just I have to say it now, it's just little things, okay, that you have laying around, mini embellishments, leftover pieces, leftover fabrics, leftover papers. This project is perfect to use up all of those things that you know that you can use for something. Here I've got a belly band and a journaling spot. Over here is a pocket with a playing card. That's just a ruffle, paper ruffle. Leftover bits of muslin. Here is a pocket and 
a piece of ephemera in there. And I believe that is a D end. Indeed it is. What do you think? Look how cute. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll stop now. So I have five of these and they are just beautiful. Am I allowed to say that? They were so much fun to make. They look really, really, really cute, really beautiful. Perhaps they wouldn't appeal to everyone, but junk journals in general don't appear to everyone. So there's that too. This is a nice little gift, perhaps a Christmas gift or even a gift for a little girl. Something like this, right? Especially if you embellish it with little girl things like fairies and I don't know, all that sort of stuff. It would be a really cute gift or something you can have in your handbag with you just to write little thoughts, little quotes for the day or people are probably thinking, how would you actually use this type of thing? And I would use it the same way you use any junk journal. How would I use this type of thing? Let me think. The first thing that comes to mind is perhaps to have a special little book like this to write down all of the nice things that people say to you. And I know that this is actually a really powerful uh, practice, especially if you get down on yourself quite a bit, you know, and if, you, if your inner voice is negative, always reminding you of the things that you don't do well or that you could do better. When you start listening to what people actually tell you, the little things like your skin looks really good today. Like what product do you use? You know, something like that. I don't know if that's a good example, but it would be nice to have a little book where you can write things that people tell you that are quite nice or random act of kindness or ideas of random act of kindness that you want to do or that you have done. And then quotes, like I said before, perhaps it can be a quote book where every single morning that you wake up, you go and look for something that's going to inspire you for the day. Like for example, okay, here's just my daily thing that where I go in and I write things that I have to do, right? And then I have a section over here for random musings. And this is what I saw today on Instagram, daily choices, presence over hassle, community over competition, flow over force, compassion over judgment, acceptance over struggle, progress over perfection, brave over stuck. And this is something that speaks to me in particular today. And that's why it's in here. So perhaps having a little booklet like this, it can be like your little thing that you do every single day. It, this is just an idea because I'm sure somebody out there is thinking, what would you even use that thing for? There's no place to write. This is just an idea I'm throwing out, you know, because on a, on a lot of the pages, so you wouldn't have a lot of writing here to do. There's not much. So it's just a, a little thing that can bring a ray of sunshine into your day, right? That might be enough for a quote for the day, something that gets you going. So in any case, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it inspiring. And what I mean by when I say inspiring, I, I mean, I hope you have that feeling where you feel like you need to go and you need to make something. That's what I mean. I hope this inspires you to make something. It doesn't have to be this. You know, sometimes just seeing something can be inspiring to get you going onto something completely different that you might love to do, right? It doesn't even have to be making these little journals. It can be painting or decluttering your kitchen. That's what I mean, because I often find inspiration from other people and it could be something totally unrelated to making junk journals. Once again, thank you. Any questions you have down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.